Hi everyone, Tony Winston here with Jazz Piano, what? Jazz Piano College, that's it. And uh, I'm putting this video just on my Patreon page, and this is for those folks that have subscribed to me through Patreon, and I do appreciate it so much. This one's for you. And uh, what I'm gonna talk about just a little bit is rootless voicings and what I've called box voicings. And you know, I have videos that you can watch for free, of course, on YouTube. And I'm not really gonna cover anything new here, but I might present it in a slightly different way. And I haven't done this for a while, so here you go. Um, let's take a classic 251 in the key of C. Okay, let's look at what I did here. I've got a bass note down here, and the right hand is playing the top of a D minor seventh chord, plus the nine. And then when I went to G7, I only changed this one note, and of course this one for the bass, G, and then to C. And here again, I'm playing the top half of the note and the ninth. Now, this is something that your left hand can do if you have a bass player, or even if you don't. If you're taking a solo and you're playing a song that comes, has a two, five, one in it, you can do it like this. So there's my D minor chord without the D. Here's my G7 chord without the G. And then there's my C, though I think I might have done it this way. Either one is fine. But the chord I want to really focus on is this one, the G dominant seventh. And this is what I've called a box voicing. And this particular shape is box one. And it doesn't matter, like you can move it up a half step here. All right, now it would be an A flat dominant seventh. And now it would be an A dominant seventh, B flat dominant seventh. You get the idea. But let's go back to our G dominant seventh. What's in this chord? We have our third, right, a third of G. We have a seventh, but it's down here. So we've got the root there. I well, don't really have the root, but I'm showing you the root. We've got the third the seventh, we've got the nine, now I could call that a second, but because we already have a seventh, we typically will call that a nine, and then up here we have the thirteen. And you see it does flow very nicely to C major, sounds kind of jazzy. Now why do I call this a box voicing? Well here's the box, and the interesting thing about this chord, and of course all its brothers and sisters, is that this chord is not just G dominant seventh with a third, I mean a ninth and a thirteen. It can be used for about five other different chords, one of which would be the tritone away, and this is really great when you're playing jazz. I know you hear about tritone substitutions all the time. Um, but if you're playing these rootless voicings, it's up to the bass player kind of to decide whether they're going to play a G or the tritone substitution, which is D flat, because this chord will function as a D flat dominant just as well as a G dominant. However, as a D flat dominant, it has these are no longer the ninth and the 13. These are the flat 13 and the sharp nine, okay? Now maybe you know a sharp nine chord to be something like this. All right, here's one in C, all right? Now you can add that flat 13 to any, any sharp nine chord. And this is what you call an altered dominant because the nine or the 11 or the 13 or any combination of those are not just nines, 11s, and 13s. They're a flat nine or a sharp nine or a sharp 11 or a flat 13. In this case, we've got the third and the seventh, the sharp nine, and there's the flat 13. And it is 13 notes up from D, D flat. If you wanna count. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and it's a flat 13. And 
it's right down there. Okay, it doesn't matter that it's only uh, like a sixth. It's still considered a 13 because the seventh is present. Okay. Now, it can be used as other chords too. D minor 6 9, right? Let's do a 2 5 1 in the key of D minor, and I'll end on this chord. So. is, of course, E minor 7 flat 5, and I could use a different box voicing there. That's A7, and there's our D minor 6, 9. It could also be used as a B minor 7 flat 5, uh, though it, it doesn't have the third in it. It has the 11th instead, but it still functions that way. And what else can it be used as? Ah, it's hard for me to remember all these other ones, but I know there's other ones out there. We call this kind of a Phrygian sound here. If you have a section of a song that sounds like... Yeah, that's Phrygian mode. Phrygian mode is just uh, the white keys, if you're in the key, if you're doing E Phrygian, because it comes from the C major scale. If you're doing F Phrygian, it comes from the D flat major scale. It has that Phrygian kind of thing. And I know guitar players, I was watching Rick Beato the other day. You know Rick Beato. Everybody knows Rick Beato. He lives right here in Atlanta, and some of my friends know him, but uh, I don't know him personally. Maybe I'll meet him someday. I hope so. Uh, though I never go anywhere, so unless he comes over here, I probably won't meet him. Um, but he was talking about this particular chord and calling it a major seven. I'm sorry, a major seven with a, like a flat five, a major seven flat five. So yes, it can function as F major flat five. Now that's not a chord you run into uh, very often, um, but uh, that's how he was kind of thinking of it. And I hope he realizes, he probably, I'm sure he does, because he's a pretty smart guy, that it works as G dominant and, and D flat alter dominant and D minor six nine and B minor seven flat five and E Phrygian as well as the F major seventh with a flat five. And let's take the inversion of this chord. That's an inversion, but it's rarely used. Next inversion. And I say it's rarely used, but it's going to function the same way and work the same way. It just has a kind of an odd sound to it. And if you can find a good progression to use it in, um, I'm sure there are some. But here's the inversion, and we'll just call this box two. And, you know, it, it, it has the exact same kind of function. We can do a D minor seventh, change that one note to get the box voicing, uh, D minor seventh, G seventh, with the 9 and the 13, it's unaltered. It's not a flat 9. It's not a sharp 9. And then to a C. And so I can take those exact same voicings and play a 2-5-1. I'll put a little thing over it here. That was bad. Okay, and I'm not going to explain all this one in the same way because it's kind of the same thing. You know, it can function as a G7, as a D altered. Let me use it that way once. I'll do a, a 2 5 1 using this chord as D flat altered. So it would be like, let me do it this way. And I will will mention too that all of these box voicings can be played as little fragments. You can leave out one of the notes of them and many times they'll function pretty much identically. So feel free to do that as well. So there's the explanation of two of the boxes, box one and box two. And just for your enjoyment, here's box three. And I'm not going to go into this one today, but this one functions also as the dominant chord. And 
it's, it's so very flexible too. If you take this exact shape, move it up uh, by a minor third. So let's do this chromatically very carefully. You get another dominant chord with different tensions. That one's got a flat nine. Then you can go and get another dominant chord with different tensions than, that, than the one I just was on. And then you can go another minor third and get another dominant chord uh, with, with some pretty wild tensions there. Flat nine, sharp 11. And, you know, that'll work in a two, five, one. You know, if I was on D minor, I could go to that chord and then to a C. And they'll all function that way. What was the other ones I had? This one. And then we had this one, so I could go. And then, of course, the classic one. Now, honestly, I forget what box four is. Uh, I think it might be like that. Also functions as a dominant. Um, and if you take the inversion of, of the, the uh, box three, you get this, which is not an official box. At least it wasn't uh, taught to me that way by my teacher, Mr. Ted Howe, who was a instructor at Berklee College of Music at the very young age of 22. But that's, a, that's worthy of being a box voicing as well. I guess these real tight intervals have a bit of a harsh quality to them. Not harsh, but they are a little bit more dissonant, and maybe that was why that was never an official box. And of course, there's other ways to deal with the uh, rootless voicings as well. Um, you know, there's uh, this chord. could be a G a dominant. I don't know if that's a box or not. I don't think it is, um, but that's a possibility as well. Let's take a song here and uh, try to use some of these box voicings. Let's do In a Melatone. There's uh, box two, an unaltered D7. That's G7, also unaltered. Now, there's a dominant chord. I don't think it's supposed to be a dominant chord. Let's play a 6-9 chord. There's G minor 7th. And, you know, you might realize that the box voicings don't seem to cover major 7s or minor 7s. And, of course, those are very common chords. So the typical way to cover those, let's take G minor 7th as an example, is to just add the ninth and leave out the root. And then you can do any inversion. So I, I took those two notes and moved them down there. And, and uh, it, usually it's either this inversion or this inversion, not the ones in between like that, because this one leads to a box voicing. There's C 7th. And this one leads to that box voicing, C 7th. Or I could get fancy and go to that box voicing and do an altered chord. Okay, but those are just that's just box one and box two. So uh, just let me show you kind of some very common usage of these box voicings. Of course, in a two five one, going from D minor to G seven to C major. Okay, I'll do them with my right hand, but typically you would do them with your left hand and. Uh, Though, though, you know, if you're playing left hand bass, uh, then you play them with your right hand. So, you know, they're good for either hand. Okay. Now, uh, let's see about using it as a D flat altered dominant. All right. So my two five one would be like this. Now, how about using it as a minor seven flat five? 
Okay, so a minor seven flat five is typically used in a minor two five one. The two, the two chord being the minor seven flat five. So let's use it there. And then I'll use the same box voicing. Now notice here I went up a fourth, but here I only went up a third because I don't want B minor seven flat five and then E minor seven flat five. I want E altered dominant. So that's why I use only went up a minor third because that's where the, that chord is. To A minor. Okay, let's see. Now, um, what else can it be used as? Oh, a minor, a minor uh, six nine chord. So here's D minor six nine. Uh, let's see, I'll use box one again as E minor seven flat five. So I'm gonna do a two five one in D, uh, altered, uh, you know, a, a, a minor two five one, because we're ending on a minor chord. See, there's that same chord, now used as a minor. And then what else? We can use it as a, you know, a major chord with a flat five, and we can use it. This is interesting. I, I said it was like a Phrygian sound, but this could be a dominant chord too. Um, it's a, like a suspended dominant you know, with a flat nine. So I'll use it at that. I'll go two, five, one and use it there. All right, here we go. B minor. Do that again. I'll put the bass note down here. It should sound better. And of course, the Phrygian usage. Jazz. Thanks again. So like I said, this video is just for Patreon subscribers. And uh, eventually, it may end up on YouTube. But at least for now, uh, it's, it's just for you guys. And I do greatly appreciate you uh, signing on. Thanks so much.